What is up y'all? It's the homie Koru. What to do? Back with another video and we are going over the Kybalion. And up next our topic is going to be the law of vibration. So what is the law of vibration? Well, it's kind of like exactly what it sounds like and that is the fact that everything vibrates. <laughs> nothing ever stays still. So in the Kybalion it says nothing rests, everything moves, everything vibrates. And that is the foundation. And like I've been saying with each of these principles, they're the same principle and we're kind of like granulating out into the more detailed and specific sections of what each one kind of means. So if we come from the law of correspondence, as above, so below, it's like we're creating these two different polarities. And the law of vibration is kind of like saying like, well, everything in between those two polarities is constantly moving because it's constantly going back and forth between those two polarities of the you know law of correspondence that we've created this distance between the all and gross matter. But that's, that's just to say that everything is in motion and everything is moving. And the all at the top or the wherever you'd want to visualize it at the at the core of all of everything is vibrating at such a high rate, as it says in the Kybalion, that it would appear as though it were at rest. So, I mean, for us or for, for any type of life form, if they were to somehow view the all, then it would appear as though it weren't moving, but that's just because it's vibrating at such an inconceivably high rate. I mean, it's creating all of reality. So it's, it's vibrating at such a high rate that it looks as though it were still. And um, it's, which is kind of crazy because, you know, if you think about it, a lot of the stuff that we see in our reality also looks like it's still, even though it's vibrating at um, a certain type of uh, degree. And, and the Kybalion, even though, it's an ancient doctrine, an ancient set of axioms that come from who knows how long ago in our history. And, you know, the book that we generally read out of in modern times now is written in the 19, 19, early, early 1900s. Science has come to discover all these things that the Kybalion was saying, that if you look at molecules, you look at atoms, they are moving. They, everything is moving. Every, we haven't been able to make something stay completely still. Um, I just watched something about quantum computers, and they have things that are almost at absolute zero. But as far as I am aware, we still haven't been able to reach this absolute zero, and that's because of this law of vibration that they talk about in the Kybalion. And so everything's vibrating, light, heat, matter, gamma rays, x-rays, everything, absolutely everything acts in accordance with the law of vibration, which means that it is always moving. But there are things that we wouldn't naturally think of as generally in motion necessarily, but thoughts, emotions, reason, desire, these all have associated vibrations with them and they are very very real they are not just metaphysically part of you know they're, they're not just your they, they have vibrations associated with them is is the main point and they can be felt and transferred and a lot of times you know these are things where if you want to get more into these sort of traditional occult and and metaphysical practices that people do you know things like telepathy or that that type of thing that's where these things would come from because the idea is that your thoughts and emotions actually have physical well everything's technically physical and metaphysical at the same time but they would actually have a vibration associated with it that could be transferred which is just something to think about i'm definitely not recommending anyone try to get into telepathy right off the bat or anything like that um but the idea that would be much more applicable and that I would highly recommend is that just like a musical instrument that is vibrating at a certain vibration, creating a certain note and a certain tone, if you are playing that instrument, you can change its tone and its vibration at will. Obviously, that's how you play an instrument, but it just goes to show that there is someone who has someone who is a pilot right some someone who's a musician someone who is changing the vibration of something to create a higher vibration to create a different tone a different note well you as a human being can act in this same very way with your thoughts with your emotions and i know a lot of us for a lot of the time look i'm not immune to this either is that we get carried away by our emotions we get carried away by our thoughts 
we just completely follow them and completely are drawn in by them and affected by them. But the truth of the matter is that they are uh, part of a greater flow of energy and they are something that you could actually take a hold of and control and be a musician for and be a, be a you know someone who has a pilot for instead of being taken away by them. You can change your thoughts by way of mental transmutation like the, the Kabbalian states ad infinitum like almost every page they're talking about mental transmutation you can change your emotions which is energy in motion the law of vibration by way of your will is it easy maybe not maybe so maybe it takes practice maybe it's something you could work at but mental transmutation and the art of changing your personal vibratory state is at the heart of what the kaibalian teaches and its practical use case because with these axioms of course they are very general and very broad and they can be you know studied in a very you know philosophical mental state but i would also say that as important is learning how to try and use and apply these laws and the law of mental transmutation to change your thoughts change your emotions change your state is paramount it's absolutely absolutely important absolutely pinnacle you can and you should have control over your vibration your thoughts and your emotions and it's at the end of this chapter in the Kaibalian in the book, if you're reading out of the book, it is talks about how this is one of the most important hermetic principles. If you can understand and apply this principle, this is huge. Very, very, very big. But like a like a proper metaphysical hermetic teacher, I will leave it at that. How to exactly change it, how to go about it, and how to do that is a journey that you should take on your own and that you should endeavor to take and to discover if that's something that you'd like to do. So with that, that's going to wrap up the law of vibration. I know I've been MIA a little bit on these YouTube videos if you're following along and I do apologize. Uh, I got another video I'm going to put out. I just had some music that came out on Spotify. Um, I've been having lots of real life stuff and um, I'm working through it. I'm working on it. I'm using the law of vibration <laughs> to change my rate. Um, but I do appreciate everyone out there watching and um, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.